Well, hello there, yet again, Justin. Crossover Minute coming at you from same place, same time as the last one, just back to back, and same location. So, we've been talking about several different various little things um, that just to, to take the, the word and principles of God um, just one one piece at a time to take a moment with it without breezing through with our heart with our mind um, as we're either reading the Bible or listening to a good sermon or um, going through a devotional or, or hearing or remembering something but taking a moment with pieces and looking at it and opening it up and taking it into a consideration seeing what God seeing what the fabric of what God is giving us is is going to do in us and allowing it to be ingested and to be digested and to be processed within us so it really can soak into our spirit and soul and get in us and I just one of these thoughts, one of these things, is um, our imperfection, whether it be our sin, whether it be other types of failures, whether it be not meeting a standard which maybe we actually didn't do so bad in or did well in, but it didn't meet our expectation or our hope um, for ourselves. And it could be totally us. It could be in a relationship. It could be life or circumstances or uh, situations that we hoped for would come to us that are not as much in our control, whatever the scenario. Um, and it feels like failure. It feels like something that we cannot get back or we cannot uh, redeem or we cannot um, overcome. We cannot ever have the chance again or or that we just we totally blew it or or that we have just we we're in a cycle of 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 sin or or addiction or bondage or or brokenness that we don't know how to come up out of or the way that we've been hurt time and again and we don't know um if we can ever trust or love again or that and also what what is it about us are we uh, attracting the wrong type of people or situations or or things are we um our decision making for for the direction for our life just all those types of things that um and and that have led to hurtful things led to maybe even some very traumatic experiences or or rejection or feeling like um that we're just never good enough whatever this is whatever our worst is there is a place with god where these things belong you know when he says when jesus says come unto me all who are burdened and heavy laden and i will give you rest He's saying that there is a burden that we've been carrying that we're not strong enough to carry and that we weren't even meant to carry. We're not able to carry it. The burden of our past, the burden of our circumstances, the burden of our failure, the burden of our sin, the burden of, of guilt and shame, the burden of, of, of things in, internally and externally circumstances that we don't feel like we could ever get out of or that may in the natural be impossible to get out of based on what it may be what do we do with that i'm i'm sitting with you i'm not preaching here i'm sitting with you what do we do with those things there's a place there's an altar this the uh um it's like the foot of the cross. It's like a place of just surrender. There's a place of just unloading. Just un just bowing down until things just fall off our shoulders. And they just fall in this place. Like an altar. And when we come to those places of just surrender. Just not just giving up randomly, vaguely, abstractly, but giving in and giving over to the one true God, to the one who saved us, 
to the one who loves us like no one else ever could when we just surrender our imperfections, our defiance towards him, our hurt towards others, the hurts that have been done towards us, the 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 disappointments, the the failures, our imperfections, just everything. Everything, just everything. At a certain point, why not everything? Just bowing down to him in that place where everything just rolls off the shoulders. And just staying bowed down until it's all off. Because we've been carrying it too long anyway. And there's a lot of things we've gotten so accustomed to carrying that we didn't realize how heavy it has been until it begins to roll off our shoulders in this place of surrender between you and God. Personally. Personally. And staying in that place of surrender. Staying in internally in that pot no matter how long or short you have to actually spend private time with him doing this just calling out to him crying out to him or whatever that surrender ends up being as you pour out to him but then staying in that posture in your heart the next time you talk to him later that day and the next day and the next day and when you read the bible again whether it's a couple of verses or a long passage or one quick verse again Doing those two things. But just staying in that posture of surrender. God, nope, I'm surrendered. I dropped this all down yesterday, day before, week before, month before. And unless or until you move and do something different within me, I'm just, boom, this is where I'm at. And then there will be a point at some point in time in this season and time and processing just of surrender. There will be a point where a holy fire will come down and fall upon that, and perhaps has already been doing so all along, upon this altar, and has been burning, and has been purging, and has been purifying, and has been consuming, and has been refining, the things that don't belong being consumed, the things that do belong being purified, perhaps things missing being instilled, by his presence and his authority and his power and his word. But there will be a point as you pro continue to where surrender will become a lifestyle and not just a season when you're overwhelmed. It will become a way of living. It will become a way of approaching God, a way of approaching life. That you'll be coming to this altar every day and starting to find a refreshing, a rekindling, a renewing because of the things that were cluttering of life that needed to be purged. It's clearing up bandwidth and freedom for the things that do belong to breathe and to grow and to blossom and to be filled with new life and new hope. And not only is there that clarity and that freedom taking place, God's not even done there. Because when he redeems our life, our life consists of our past, present, and future. So it doesn't just mean, okay, he is taking this point going forward. I am brand new. That is true. But he is also going to redeem our past. By taking our ashes as we look behind us and see a trail of ashes of the things that we have been in that place of surrender that have been purged and we realize those things weren't good for us anyway we didn't need those things and truly compared to him we didn't want those things as much as we want his beauty and then the master artist comes along gathers up those ashes even and on one of the faces of your heart begins his handiwork once again and takes those ashes and as a charcoal artist paints and draws and composes 
a beautiful mural where your past shows the redemptive charcoal face of Christ himself stamped on your heart for all to see so that even your past redeemed in the hand of the master beautifying your life where it truly was as Isaiah said that he gives us beauty for ashes that is our God that is of the place of surrender that is part of the essence of the altar where's your altar where is your place at the foot of the cross that was made just for you because there is one run to it prostrate your heart to it make it a lifestyle and allow God to do his work in the ways that we can never do for ourselves I bless you in the name of Jesus until next time